Welcome to the Art Workshop. I'm Christopher Epling. We appreciate you tuning in today. Uh, we have something in store for you today that I think you're going to enjoy. Um, we want to break it down back to the very basic elements of drawing and cartooning for this episode. And we're going to be drawing uh, one thing three times so, so that you get an idea of how different levels of cartooning raise as you, uh, uh, you draw more and more and you become more comfortable uh, using and applying the different techniques. Now, the biggest um, uh, method that we use when we promote in, in the art workshop is, is the uh, circle method. It's a method that um, I, I've used and use currently, and it's a method that really just takes a, the basic uh, idea of the structure of, of, a, of, a, of whatever subject it is that you're working on or looking at or trying to draw, and you break it down to its simplest forms, simplest shapes. By doing so, you're able to build from the ground up a foundation, and then on that foundation, you put all of the details in. Sometimes artists get very, very uh, discouraged, and they, they get very um, uh, downtrodden uh, on, on the idea of, of looking at something and trying to draw it exactly the way you see it, and not being able to do that. Uh, no artist draws something perfect the first time, and there's no such things really as, as a perfect drawing. It's, it's all of our, our different, um, um, representations of something so your drawing will be different than mine and and mine will be different than someone else's but that's okay that's the uh, beauty and wonderful thing about art is that you know everyone has their own uh, um, take on on whatever it is we're working on so uh, at the record time of the recording of this particular episode we, we've just breached over into 2018 and and one of the f um, figures that um, um, pops up a lot during this time of year is, is father time and more so probably than any place is in editorial cartooning. A lot of editorial cartoonists will show uh, the, the, the ending of, a, of one year and the beginning of another by, by showing uh, um, Father Time along, along with, with a baby to represent the new year and Father Time being um, the, the year that just closed out. So we're going to be drawing Father Time in today's episode, which in, in a cartoon format. So uh, grab your pencil and paper and your eraser and uh, let's get started. Okay, so uh, paper, of course, is an essential tool. I like to go over kind of what I'll be using for the episode. This is a Willis Graphite pencil. It's a 2H. And uh, those of you who um, uh, know what the numbers mean, uh, the, the numbers after on a pencil is, is to um, tell us what type of graphite is, is inside. So we all know either a 2H or a 4H pencil from school. Um, but that range um, goes from light to dark. So um, H being the lightest, and then you'll see sometimes pencils with B's on them, like 2B, 3B, 4B. Uh, those the further you go on that scale, the darker uh, the graphite. I'm also going to be using a block eraser, of course, to um, um, erase my lines. And I'm going to be using, after we actually draw the final uh, version of this cartoon, a really, uh, you're going to think, what in the world is this at first, a strange ink. Now, this is an ink that... Um, now, this isn't this isn't tobacco. <laughs> this isn't tobacco uh, in, in a bottle. I can assure you that this is actually um, walnut. So what what has happened with this is that I collected walnuts right here in Pike County from uh, from the ground after they fell, and this was last year actually that I did this. Well, yeah, uh, actually 2016. I got to always do that. So uh, 2016, whatever. Uh, I actually uh, boiled the walnuts and added a little bit of vinegar. Uh, drained it and then used a, used, used a, a strainer to pull all the, the, the pieces of walnut out of the out of what was left and um, what was left out of that after boiling it with a little bit of vinegar in it is a really good uh, sepia ink. Um, it's it's got a um, really uh, nice uh, bronze almost uh, reddish tint a little bit brown uh, hue to it. So I'm going to be using this at the end to add a little bit of shadowing to uh, to my version of Father Time. Uh, you can do this at home too with a little bit of a, a parental supervision. You can collect walnuts and, and boil your own ink. So I've collected it into this um, small container here to make it a little bit easier later on for us to use. I'm also going to be using a, a regular um, felt tip pen uh, for my line work later on and then also a felt brush pen. And these are just um, drawing pens that you can get in sets at any hobby store. Um, those, are, those are my tools for this episode. Um, 
actually to apply, I forgot one thing, to apply the, the ink a little bit later on, I'm going to be using this aqua brush for the shadowing. Okay, so let's get started. Now, the first um, design of Father Time that we're going to be working on is a very simple design. So you at home, uh, just draw along with me. The first thing you're going to be doing is drawing a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. You can see how many times I've went around to make the lines there to form that circle. It's not a perfect circle. It's okay. Just draw the shape of a circle starting out. The fun thing about cartooning is that you can draw the most simple version of something and uh, have it still to look or represent whatever it is you're trying to draw. Or you can make it pretty complex. At the sides of each circle, draw a straight line coming down on each side, on the left and right, just a line. Now notice I didn't go too far below the bottom of the circle, but I want these lines here to represent the sides of um, the face of Father Time. Now, at the bottom of this, uh, these two lines here, you're going to draw an oval. Okay. So what we've got now is a circle, two lines, and an oval. Okay. Let's work on this starting out first and then we'll branch out into the body. Now this is actually all we need to draw Father Time's uh, face and beard for a simple version of the character. So now what you're going to do is come just inside here and you're going to draw two circles, ovals actually, these are the eyes. So you can darken those in a little bit so you can see how this is coming together. So you have two ovals for eyes, right? Then you're going to draw the nose. So upside down letter C, right there in between and below those two ovals. Now we can work on Father Time's beard. So just like you would draw clouds, you can imagine this is like drawing clouds. Draw a little series of these little um, curves to make the mustache. And that's all we're going to do. Just a series of these little curves here. Any way you want to go about, however many you want to add, it's up to you. Now you're going to do the same thing now to form his beard. So come up on the side of where you've drawn these two lines on each side now. Okay, and you're going to put some more of these little ovals. Let's draw a series of these. Kind of looks like Santa Claus a little bit. So you can see how this works out. Just drawing a series of these shapes that just keep on uh, um, curving around all the way around the bottom of this oval up to the side up here on the other, other side of the head. Once you've done that, let's put some uh, eyebrows on here. Same thing as before. Looks like clouds almost. Now, Father Tom um, usually is drawn wearing a, um, a, a cloak um, and, and also uh, carrying an hourglass and a lot of times a Sith too. So now for the top of the head, you can put just a few strands of hair and let's draw some hair on the side of Father Tom's head. Now you can see now we've, we've used just a few shapes uh, to form this character's head. Uh, there's not a lot going on. There's not a lot of uh, detail in here. Think of uh, Charles Schultz and Charlie Brown, the characters, and uh, you can get an idea of the level of detail we're wanting to get with this particular version. Now, on each side, you notice how I draw these lines coming down. So, this would be the form of uh, his uh, garment. Over here, what I want you to do now is draw a, a circle here. And then we're going to draw another circle over here. Kind of looks like boxing gloves, right? Once you have that, real simple process, move on the side of this circle, draw a series of these humps. This will be the, for the fingers. One, two, three, four of them. And then you're going to add a little more detail in there now. Draw some fingers in there. Just coming down. Each, uh, each finger going a little bit shorter as you get towards the pinky there. Now for the thumb. <clears throat> for the thumb, it's just, uh, uh, watch carefully what we're going to do. Come just inside the circle. You're going to draw this shape here, just like that, okay? Now this is where uh, we will draw um, his staff. So you're just going to draw a long, straight line 
Okay, and then at the top of this line, you're going to come down the other side, the parallel line, and at the top, you're going to put the blade. I'll move it down some so you can see. Just like that. Okay. All right. So once you have that now, let's come over and draw the hourglass. Now, remember on this hand where we drew the humps coming down on the right side of the, of the circle? Over here, I want you to draw the humps at the top. So one, two, three, four. Okay. The reason being he's holding the hourglass and he's going to be holding it so that we can see it hanging down. Okay. So there's the uh, fingers. Underneath, we can draw our thumb again. Same shape as over here. We're just turning it around this time. Okay. Now we can work on the hourglass. On each side, you want to draw the handle coming off. It kind of looks almost like it's going to be a lantern at first. Now, you're going to draw the rest of the shape of the hourglass here by drawing a straight line, attaching the two sides of these uh, handles. Okay. Now you can go ahead and make it almost like a, like a rectangle now because we can put the detail in the middle once we've done that. We can put some more with this cloak. Add these details in a little bit later if you want, but just these lines, these curves. Okay. Inside of this square now, we need to draw uh, the hourglass. So the easiest way to do this is to draw a line coming down and cross-sectioning that, that, uh, that rectangle. And then do the same on this side, just like that. Okay. Once you have that now, you have the basic shape of an hourglass. So if you wanted to make it a little more curved, you can. And do that on each side. And you could draw a little bit of sand at the bottom. Okay. So now we have a very simple version of uh, Father Time. So if you follow along with me step by step, you can see how we've constructed all these elements together to form this version of Father Time. So let's go ahead now and do a little bit more detailed version of Father Time. This time what we're going to be doing is uh, making it a little bit more uh, cartoony, which is not a word, but um, it's a word we're going to use in the workshop. We're cartoony meaning that the features are going to be a little more um, um, animated and um, a little more detail. Now I always start with a circle. Um, those of you who've watched the show in the past know that. And So at the top of this uh, paper here, you're going to go ahead now and draw a circle. Sketch it out best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once you have this circle sketched in, we're actually going to go as far now, we're going to sketch out the entire body okay using the circle method then we'll go back over it and add our detail whereas before we drew the face and the head first and then the rest of the body well most of the body after but for this version I want you to sketch all of this out with me and have it all kind of sketched out before putting the detail the circle leads into this shape here for the neck the circle represents the head this is going to be the neck Okay, um, Father Time has had a rough year, so we're going to draw him hunched over a little bit. So let's do another oval. And you can see how this sort of comes, starts to look like a body in a second. It's not going to look like that at first. If you want to watch me to actually draw all of this out and then do that yourself, that will be fine. But you can see how this starts to look like a body. There's a head, a neck, this is a torso, the waist. Okay, we can go ahead if it makes it any easier, and we can do a couple of little ovals to represent an arm, like that, a hand here, okay, come over here and uh, come down with this oval to represent the other arm, the other hand here, okay, he's going to be walking, so we're going to have a line to come down representing the leg. Notice the head is the biggest part of the body, and that's what we want. We're going to draw now the foot, just an oval, just like that. And then the other foot stepping out. Draw a line here. 
just like that. So now you can see how this looks more like um, the structure of a body, okay? So we can put in the detail or begin to put in the detail now. Like I said, this is more of a more cartoony version of Father, Father Time. So starting out at the top again, at the head, let's go ahead and draw a couple circles to represent his eyes. Now I've laid this one like almost like eggs. So you have one here and one here. I'll draw a little line to represent the uh, eyelid. And as we said, he's had a rough year, so go ahead and put the pupils in. Drawing these out helps you to see exactly where we're going with the rest of the drawing. Um, having an idea of where the eyes are in relation to the ears and other parts of the head helps us now to add in all the other details. Now for the nose, let's give Father Tom a pretty big nose. That, just sketch a letter C coming off of the eye on the left. You give him a nostril here, like that. Now coming back over to the side now, we're going to put the ear. Let's put a letter C, backwards letter C here. A lot of simple shapes are added together to form the entire in piece. Just remember that. All these simple shapes, um, when you look at these all collected together, may be a little overwhelming just to sit down and draw it, but if you take your time and just draw each little uh, shape as we move, then you'll see how they all come together. The top of his head, again, it's a, almost like a letter C. It's a, a little curve to the top of the head there. Now you can draw some lines to represent the hair coming out. We're going to draw a, a little more hair on this version than, than the previous. So just draw as many of these uh, points as you want to represent the strands of hair coming down. Doesn't have to be exactly the way I did mine. All right, so you, you add your own touch to yours. Let's work on the mustache now. So on each side of the nose, so on this side and on this side, we want to draw his mustache. And I put two lines coming down, one here and one here. And from there, what I can do now is add a few more of these points, like on the other side, just these jagged little lines to represent strands of hair. Now, we have the mustache sketched in. And what we can do now, since we already have the ear ready for us, is come back on this side of the head and draw a few more of these jagged lines coming down to connect to the mustache. Then, on the other side of the beard here. And we're going to make his beard really long so we can have it actually flowing back like this, okay? And you can connect these elements together. And use your own style to um, adding things, taking things away as you want. Maybe you want a really long beard. It's up to you. Now if you look closely at what we have so far, you can see that all inside of this area right here where the beard is are shapes and elements of the drawing that we no longer need. But so why did I draw that to begin with? Well I drew that so I can see where the head is in relation to the shoulders, in relation to the waist, in relation to the rest of the body. Now since I no longer need this portion, and it may prove to be a little confusing later on, what we can do is go ahead and take our eraser and get rid of most of it. It's not going to hurt our design any because what will end up happening is when we start adding on and drawing the rest of the body, all of this will be there waiting for us. So we don't need to worry about it. We don't need to be concerned that by getting rid of this uh, elements that we no longer can see, uh, it's not going to impact uh, what we're able to do later. So you can see how that comes together now. So, but I'm still left though with all these things I need at the bottom. I need to, to know where the hands are and the arms and all of these things. So now what I'm going to do is come over here and I'm going to draw the garment. The garment's going to be um, his cloak or his uh, tunic. And it's going to be coming up underneath the beard. So what I've done is drawn this um, shape wrapping around his wrist coming up. You can do the same thing. And down here, I have this element already drawn, so I'm just going to 
add a little more to it. I already have this oval drawn. Notice here you can't see inside of the uh, sleeve of his shirt or his uh, tunic here, but you can over here. So that's why we see this added line here and not here. This hand is bent, this arm is down, this arm is up so we can see. Okay, now let's go ahead and put our fingers on this hand. Starting off with the thumb, the thumb really easy. That's all I've done. So it's just literally um, this shape that comes around like the top of a, a question mark. Okay, that's the thumb. Simple shapes for fingers, just like we're drawing baby carrots here and add those in. Now once we have that, we have exactly everything we need to add his, uh, the, the uh, scythe or sith, I'm not really sure how you uh, pronounce it now that I'm uh, drawing it, but it's his, uh, his reaper blade, I guess is the best way to put it. You see the grim reaper um, carrying um, something similar. So it's a blade at the top of this long um, this long staff, right? It's for harvesting, for cutting the, the uh, wheat and the shaft, and getting all that organized. So I guess that represents, I'm guessing here, totally guessing, but if I were get to guess what this represents, it's probably maybe uh, cutting things out that you don't need for the new year maybe, and you know, the new year resolutions and all that stuff. I have no idea, but. So now we're going to return back to the bottom of the drawing and uh, we're going to work on this hand. So for this hand now, we have two shapes. Now notice what I've done here. What I've done is I've made a straight line and this curved line here because we're gonna have these fingers bent up behind the hand. See what I've done? So I've come down with a straight line, a curved line, then I've drawn this finger coming out. Now I can add what we can see behind the rest of the fingers there. Now what we're left with is the bottom part of his body. So let's finish that out. Draw this line coming out like this. Now here's, again, we're, we're going to be looking at uh, elements of perspective like we talked about here. Uh, perspective just meaning what we can see and what we can't see and the angle in which we see it. So for here what we've done is we put this strange letter C here at the bottom of this straight line. And the reason we've done that is we want to be able to see a little bit of the bottom of, the of his tunic. Just like that. So this leg is coming out from underneath while this leg is bending back. Same laws that apply for the sleeves, okay? Once we have that, we can go ahead and work on the feet. So now we have the first leg coming down and we'll put a toe at the end of this foot. We'll put him wearing, put some sandals on him. So we're just gonna draw this large iron, like the bottom of an iron, okay? And this will be his sandals. Put some more toes in there if you want. And then over here, same thing. Now I'm gonna be using this walnut ink to ink this, uh, to add the shadowing in, I'm, I mean at the end. But before I do that, I wanna ink all the lines I wanna keep, and only the lines I wanna keep, because once that dries, I can erase all the lines that I don't want to keep. So now we have Father Time sketched out. So those of you with a, a um, pen at home can follow along with me now. We're just going to ink over top of all these lines we want to keep. We'll kind of go through this a little fast for you so we can get to the part of actually um, um, putting the walnut ink um, shadowing in. So again, just sketch over the lines that you want. Get rid of the lines that you don't want. This is the time to do that. And you can uh, really be uh, conservative with how you want to do this. Now notice I brought this down a little more here at the top. You can get rid of stuff that you didn't want to uh, include, but maybe you uh, accidentally left in. And you can add to stuff too. This is that time of the drawing where you really get to really get to make the cartoon or drawing come alive. Now we do a lot of cartooning with the art workshop. Um, mostly, and the biggest reason is we have 
a lot of viewers out there that are students, and um, those viewers love love cartoons. But also, um, cartooning is actually a really um, accessible way for us to learn the basics of drawing. So perspective and all these things that we talked about while just drawing Father Tom, uh, these are things that when you get into art and application of medium, mediums that you use, that means just whatever you're using to draw with, uh, these things apply. The rules apply. There are certain rules to art, believe it or not. Um, you don't have to follow those rules, but um, there are some rules with art. I'm still learning about the rules, and I've been drawing now for a long time, but you'll never stop learning. That's the great point about this. I don't have all the answers to everything. We learn together, but I can share with you what I have learned, and you can take that and expand on it. So now we have the inked version of Our Father Time. And as promised, I'm going to use some of this ink now to put a little shadowing in for our um, um, detail. Now notice that it's not real dark. It's, it's a bronze, almost like a uh, rustic look to this. It's a really nice uh, hue to this color and uh, I really like working with it. I'm going to work with this more and I have worked with this quite a bit um, in the past doing certain uh, drawings using just just the ink from the walnuts. But um, those of you at home interested in in uh, creating your own walnut ink, you can. Uh, there's um, different types of instructions for that online. So if you were to go online and look up uh, walnut ink, how to make your own walnut ink, you'll see. And and this is uh, any you know any hard nut. Um, or any type of uh, husk, anything that has a husk on it, can usually be be boiled, and you can usually try. To, you can make uh, variations of ink with it. So um, maybe that's something you'd like to do this this new year is learn more about creating your own mediums to use in drawing. So that'd be kind of fun to do. So all I'm doing really here is just adding a little bit of detail with it, um, do a little bit of shadowing, not much. Mostly I wanted you to see the color that, that this uh, ink has when it, when it dries. Um, hopefully you can see it through, through the uh, pencil and uh, the under, under drawing to my father time here, but um, you can get the idea. It's a, it's a real, real pretty color and uh, it's made from things that are just laying around the ground right here in Eastern Kentucky. So. That's pretty pretty cool in itself. So I've added just a little bit of detail using using the uh, walnut ink. And uh, now the reason I didn't go ahead uh, as I su suggested you doing and uh, erasing my my pencil lines is because um, we wanted to go ahead and finish this. And to wait for that to dry would have taken a little bit. And I really wanted to get this in before finishing up. But now. Um, as you can see, I can actually get rid of some of it. Of course, all of the pencil lines that are uh, left in that I've colored over with the uh, walnut ink, those are locked in now. There's no erasing those, but I can get rid of some of the lines and some of the detail hanging around. I really want to show your work off, so please do email that to me if you followed along or any of your artwork. It doesn't have to be anything that we've done here. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this. Make your own mediums. Get out there and research how to do that. There's uh, tons of way to be resourceful right in your own backyard. And until next time, I'm Christopher Epling for the Art Workshop, and keep drawing.